A quick look here at the keyboard. This is a five octave keyboard and I'll show you which notes are used to tune a guitar. Starting at the top string, which is the lowest sounding string, you would uh, tune it to this note right here. That's an E note. That's the first E on the five octave keyboard and the way you know it's an E it's the note that's to the right of the two black notes. Anywhere you have two black notes on a piano, the note on the right is an E. So you start with this E note and tune your top string, your sixth string to that. Tune your fifth string to that A note. Tune your fourth string to the D note. G is the third string on the guitar. Tune your third string to that note. And B is the second string. And another E. That's the bottom string or the number one string on the guitar. You tune the number one string to that note. That's how you tune a guitar to a keyboard, a five octave type keyboard. And another quick way to tune a guitar. I don't know how quick it is, but it's another way to tune a guitar. You get a little pitch pipe like this one and blow into it for the sounds for the different strings. This top E string, the top E string on a guitar. Oops. Let's see how close that is. Where's my... Uh, here we go. Uh, this guitar is in reasonably good tune. This is a low-cost guitar. It looks nice cost me one penny, uh, bought it on eBay, and $33.99 shipping and handling, but it came with a tuner and with a little guitar bag and uh, what else, a strap, and I don't know what else. Oh, an extra set of strings. And this guitar, being a cheap guitar, this is a good guitar to learn on. You want to start with a cheap guitar, then gradually go to the type of guitar that you actually like to play. And one of the reasons for getting a cheap guitar, of course, is you can take it with you to the beach or camping, whatever. You don't have to worry about someone uh, stealing it or banging up against it. This is a cheap guitar that I've had for many years. And this guitar plays, I've, I've played it a lot. I, I enjoy taking it with me and I can bang it up all I want to. But above the third fret, uh, it doesn't work. Like if I tried to make a bar chord. but it does all right down here. By the way, I do not use a pick. It sounds like I'm using a pick. Uh, we're going to show you real fast uh, how to read the chord charts that you see in magazines like this. That is a chord chart for an E chord. Let me straighten these out and I'll show you why that's a chord chart for an E chord. When you see a drawing like that, and they are, the drawings, the graphs, are in just about every music book and certainly in every guitar music book. Uh, the top line on the graph indicates the nut of the guitar, which first of all I'll show you the nomenclature real fast. The nut of the guitar, assume you're holding the guitar with the tuning area pointed up. The nut is the first horizontal bar that you come to after the tuning area or it would be the first vertical bar if you're holding it uh, for uh, playing. But this bar right here is called the nut. Then each of these parallel bars is called a fret. So this would be the first fret, second fret, third fret, and so on counting from the nut which would basically be the zero fret. That's another way of thinking about it. 
So, uh, and also I'll tell you real fast, the strings are numbered like the floors of a building from the bottom to the top. So the number one string on the bottom, the number six string on the top as you're holding the guitar to play it. Here's an E chord. What that is, I'm pressing the third string, third from the bottom, third string inside the first fret. That means here's the first fret. You go toward the tuning area from the first fret, but stay inside that first fret. So the third string inside the first fret and the fourth and fifth strings inside the second fret and strum your guitar and you get an E chord and we'll look at that again. There's the, uh, the graph that shows you. There's the nut right at the top and then each vertical line is a string. So we've got uh, the first string, second string, third string. We put our finger on the third string inside the first fret, between the first fret and the nut. You put your finger right there on that third string. Then the fourth and fifth strings inside the second fret and you play your E chord. If there were a number written right opposite this top line, like say it had the number five there, that would mean you would go to the fifth fret. But normally that top line is the nut. That's 95% of the time that's what the graph shows you. The nut, the first fret, the second fret, and the third fret, and where you put your fingers on string number one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'll show you another one here just for the heck of it. This, uh, let me fold this without anything showing through from behind so that we won't confuse myself. What that is, is just like the E chord except we don't have that third string inside the first fret. We don't have a finger there. We do have the fourth and fifth string inside the second fret. That's an E minor. I'll show you what that sounds like here in just a second. And I'll show you one other one here real fast. This is an A chord. There's the nut and the first fret and the second fret and inside the second fret on the second, third, and fourth strings. Second, third, and fourth strings inside the second fret. You hold it down and you'll get an A chord. It's, uh, most people do that by holding the uh, second, third, and fourth strings with an individual finger on each string. I know it's hard to see the uh, strings there, my fingers are in the way, but believe me it's the second, third, and fourth strings inside the second fret and most people use three fingers to make such a chord. What am I, what am I doing here? I can't even... There. I use one finger because it's easier for me to make a A chord that way. Now we saw the E chord with the third string inside the first fret and the fourth and fifth strings inside the second fret press down. That doesn't sound right, does it? Let me look at what I'm doing here. Okay. There's my E chord. Now when I remove my first finger from the third string inside the first fret, when I remove my finger, it's a sad sounding E chord.